What's going on, everybody? Everyone, it is Sunday. Y'all know who we are. Y'all know who we be. Y'all know where we at. Okay. We coming down to the valley where the grass get naked. If you throw a bad, then you know she gonna shake it. One, two, break them. Three, four, break them. These niggas grind hard, but these bitches grind harder. Climbing up the pile, yeah, they get out of the The crowd below, stay ready for the show. The feel, the dope. Don't let it take your soul. Hey. 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 <laughs> you know, that's my jam. You better give it to a man. Oh, you better give it to him. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hey, everybody. We are black again for another review of P Valley, y'all. This is season two, episode two. What episode are we in? Season two, episode three, Dirty Dozen, okay? Let me get my stuff together back here in the background. I got a little bit of everything going on everywhere. I got my notes right here. Okay. Hi, y'all. First of all, happy Juneteenth to everybody. Okay, you already know you already know Mizzle was getting down, Renee, because that's what he do. Okay, <laughs> that's what he do. Happy Juneteenth to everybody. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are out there. Shout out to my two dads, as well as to the father of my child. Happy Father's Day for all y'all. And to all the fathers out there that are watching, all the mothers that stand in the place. Single mothers. Single mothers yes. yes, single mothers that stand in the place as fathers. For some of these niggas out here that ain't doing what they're supposed to do, happy Father's Day to everybody, okay, y'all? We are black again. Did y'all see last night's episode of P-Valley? Because it was good. It was good. It was good. Go ahead, what did you say? I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to come, come out. Come back in. I think I'm going to come All right. I didn't hear Echo. Let me send him the link one more time just in case he need it. But anyways, though, y'all, while he's doing that, let me send this to him again. The episode last night was so doggone good. There's so much different twists and turns. It seems like that's going on. So many different predictions that I have about what this season is going to come to. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's given a whole lot of, I don't, I don't trust. This. Yeah. I didn't hear you actually echoing at first, but okay. it's given, I don't trust um, Haley. Mm. It's given what's going on with Teak and LaMurder. A little tick tick, yes. It's giving a whole lot it's of hope. Like something's going on there. Something's going on there, y'all. Look, before we get into the review for everything, first of all, y'all see the little ticker down there? Okay. I am celebrating my birthday. My birthday is actually on the 27th, but I will not be here next week, Monday. You will not, or Sunday. I won't be here for the review for um, P Valley. Um, as well as we will not have a Queens panel next Sunday as well. I will be in Miami getting my life, okay, for my 42nd birthday, okay? So you will not see me, but the cash app is scrolling down there at the bottom if you feel so inclined to donate to my birthday fund. I truly, truly, truly appreciate you. you. Um, in the meantime, make sure that you are subscribed to Mizzle's, cha uh, Mizzle's channel. You're following him on IG as well as Twitter, and you're following him on his Discord. Mizzle is super, super, super active on all of them, okay? So, um, Mizzle, do you have plans to do – what are your plans for next for the next P-Valley review? Since I won't be doing it, I want to make sure everybody goes over there and they're supporting you. Yes, I know tomorrow, um, Monday – I'm going to do Atlanta and P-Valley. It's so like that. My review. But next um, week, I will do the P-Valley review on, let me see. Maybe right, let's do it. Oh, no, I said social media. I'll do it probably this, probably this round this time. Hey, let's do it before my Utcha live. I do two lives in one day. <laughs> bam, bam. Get it out. Just like that. I ain't even mad at it. one day. So I do one at one o'clock and another one at four. So Okay, cool, two. cool. So, One yes, y'all, make sure. But either way, go. I'm going to put his info up again. Um, again, I'll put it up now, then I'll put it up again before we get out of here so you know to make sure that you are subscribed to his channel and that you're following him on the Discord and Twitter and IG. Like I said, he keeps everything 
up to date, keeps you posted on everything so you know where to find all the good good from, okay? All right, y'all ready to get on into this review? Because it was good. I was here for it. If you don't know, now you know we are here for the review of P Valley. Again, this is season two, episode three, Dirty Dozen, okay? Now, look, this episode starts off, once again, we have the pendulum pole that's in the middle of the paradise room, right? I don't know. Where am I at? Where am I at? Hey, Aja, what's going on? Boo, hey, I love you back. And ain't nothing you can do about it, baby. Kush, I remember you, girl. Uh, no, baby, Hayes, that's what it was. But anyways, though, so I don't know if, if they planning on securing this pole down or it's just going to be hanging. Ain't that a dancer's violation, a work violation, a cold violation or something? I don't know, because I've got nervous, too. I see all the Montavia spirits in that room, so I don't know. <laughs> Montavia's going to have them hoes sliding out the pole, breaking their dog on neck. But oh, Roulette yeah. is on that pole, and Roulette is going off. Like, she's doing tricks and all of this, that, and the other. And she's got her mask on in the room, right? Now, it's a dude that's sitting in there in a the room. And, you know, he you can see he's getting turned on by what he sees, a little performance that um, Roulette is putting on, right? And so he asked her take down baby kush that's what it was he asked her to take off her mask and she like well you know how much you willing to pay to take off that mask and so he pulls out a little knot of money and i'd have been the same thing i'm like here i am and so she goes over to him like real seductive and was like oh how about you go ahead and pull it down he pulls the mask down and it reveals her lips and of course she's got beautiful lips she's got on this beautiful sparkly lipstick and all that and what he said just irritated me, too, because I've heard men say that to me before, and it's so freaking irritating. Like, ooh, you got some good dicks. Oh, you know that? Yeah, when they say you got the good lips, they mean something. I was like, oh, my God. I don't like that. That yeah. ain't a compliment I want to hear. I don't like them. Like, ooh, you got some sexy-ass lips. I know what you mean when you say that. Mm hmm even though I do enjoy the act of fellatio still. I don't need you coming to tell me how beautiful my lips are because I already know. <laughs> That's <I> know. <laughs> Anyways, so... He then tells her, and she was he said that about her lips. She kind of rolled her eyes, same thing. She was like, "Oh my god, this nigga." And so he was like, "Okay, how much I gotta pay for that sloppy top?" And she like, "Uh, uh, I'll go for rule number two. You hoeing, then you got to go. Or you uh, no, if you a hoe, you got to go." And so then she was like, "But I will do a little some strange for a piece of change." Now what she said, "I'll do some strange for a brick." Yeah, for a brick. Yep, for a brick. That's all it took. She said, "I'll do some strange for a brick." Baby, he pulled that big old brick out. I was like, damn. I was like, Is she really <laughs> finna do what I think she finna do? Yes. He pushes the chair back so they're out of camera view. And now she she starts to go down on him and do what she do. So this After he gave us a shot, he's whipping his thing out. And I said, oh, okay. I said that too. I was like, oh, here we go again. Yes. I said, oh, y'all love these little big D's. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I appreciate from P-Valley? They equal opportunities because uh -huh. normally on TV, we see in titties and ass all the time. Titties and ass. So they are equal opportunity here. We're going to see Wayne and I'm here for it. It's Wayne. Like Wayne. Because P-Valley, a lot of females do watch the show. So mm -hmm. they like to see it too. They like to see it too. So they know that they cater to their audience. It's like that. So <laughs> even though men will watch it too because it's, it's strippers, but still, it's we like it. But um, yeah, Bucky I was here for it. I know, yeah, I know I nicknamed her. So, but yes, her name is Roulette, but I call her Bucky Replica because yeah, I know Bucky Replica. replica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said it look like she's gonna be a wild um, wild card, and like she kind of breaking on these rules. And I don't know, it's maybe because you go break some of the rules, girl, before you get out the door. But then again, she's one of the good dancers right now. So I don't know, maybe Uncle Cook go let, let us slide a little bit. But I was like, where are the people at? They ain't watching the cameras? Because, you know, Diamond's not there. Because, you know, he would have been there real quick. Who are you doing to be? And you know Big L ain't shit. Big L, I don't know what kind of security guard Big L is, child. He don't ever do his job. But, yeah, she gave me, and I was like, but I was like, child, that's that like that. <laughs> it pays a bill, a bill. She I said, okay, well, I got to... I got to get these these dollars. Where them dollars at, nigga? Where them dollars at? So she, you know, went on ahead. He pulled out that brick, and so she gave on a little sloppy toppy. Roulette is like a hood stripper, so yeah. she gonna do what she wants. What and she I, I hate, yeah, I ain't even might, mad at yeah, you. But she might get away with a lot of things. Yeah, you know? appreciate you, Renee. I sure enough appreciate you, girl. 
So she does what she does. And then afterwards, they back in the locker room and you see Whisper and Roulette, baby. They is just having it. They living their best life. They got money on top of money. They got bags of money and they celebrating. And Whisper is like, I told you, if you go out at 11, 11, the stars are going to line and the universe. Because, you know, Whisper is all into the spirits. And yeah, into the spirits. Like, yeah she's into the universe and all this. She into that numbers, the spirituality, all that stuff like that. So she got that good bad karma going on with her. I ain't mad at you, do you, boo boo? And so you see Mercedes looking at them. Kind of, Mercedes over here with her little Ziploc bag of money. Well, they got trash bags of money. She literally got like a little corner store. You don't know why it's bad to get the corner yeah. store. She got a little corner store bag of money and they ain't even full. And so Roulette goes over to Mercedes and was like, uh huh, look at look, look at it like this, Mercedes. Your bag ain't half empty. It's half full. I'm an optimistic type of bitch. <laughs> and I was Mercedes. Mercedes was like, bitch, mind a business that pays yeah, me. Mind your business, girl. We don't got time for you. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't lying, though, man. Hey, look at it. The glass ain't half empty. Bitch is half full. That's how you got to see it. Otherwise, you're going to be mad as hell. So Mercedes from there goes over to her shop. I mean, goes over to her gym and the shop next door to her gym is being closed down. Of course, you know, the yeah, Rona. Soul food place. Come on now. You know, I love the soul food. Like, I don't need the soul food place. Like, really? <laughs> Not sweetie pies. That's it. Not sweetie pies. So, yeah, the soul food place is closing down. And you remember, Mercedes' gym isn't even all the way up, built it damn self. So she sees the business next to hers closing down. And then she goes into her gym. You see wires hanging from the ceiling. It's got a couple of yoga balls and a couple of exercise equipment here. But it's still not even all the way done and together. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, another thing, Mercedes got these, um, this thing on her arm because her shoulder. What is the thing it's called, Mizzle? Um, I don't know what they call what um the little shoulder protective things like um the, for the muscle or whatever you you yeah, wear that on the shoulder bandages appendages appendages or something like that I don't know what the things are but she got that on because of course you know when Diamond tried to get the spirit up out her arm the the itchy gitchy yah yah you know it still got a little residue up in <laughs> the itchy gitchy so she sees she's kind of hard up so what does she do she ends up calling coach and basically is the table. I mean, is the offer still on the table? You know what I'm saying? And she also tells Coach, the only way I'm going to take this is your wife has to agree upon this. Now, Miss, let me ask you. If you was to get you a coach in your life, and he says, you know, whether he has a wife or he has a husband, either way it goes, it's like, you know, my spouse, they already know about it. Mm -hmm. Would you be like, okay, I need to meet your spouse so that they know everything is copacetic? Whoop -de whoop or would you be like, hell no, nah, that's too sticky. I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah, so this is what I say. I'm, I'm saying right now. So if I if I did get a coach in my life right now who has a husband and wife and she is on board, he or she is on board, then it's no breaking the rules. It's like that. Now, what we go you're gonna talk about it later, but when that wife did and let her know what you need to do to get this agreement. I'm not mad at her. I'll say, listen, if y'all, yep. I ain't mad at her. I said, listen, you gonna do this? Let's do it right. And yep. I was shut. And I said, oh, you know what? Even Mercedes was like, oh. but she she respect the bill B. She respected. She respected. She signed no papers though. But I was like, I ain't mad at her because if we gonna do this, we gonna do this right. And Thank I was you. like, and I would have been. I'm not mad at Mercedes again with the bill. I said, listen, he was willing to try to sponsor you last time. And I know a lot of people that got a guy say that, oh, my wife know and everything. I said, let me find out. Let me see. Yeah, it. exactly. Let me, right. How, let me gauge how she's feeling, what's going on, everything. And, and if she's not with it, then I'm not doing with it. So I respect Mercedes hustles. And I was like, listen, if she if she had, if a lot of little hoes have more respect, like Mercedes have respect, then things would be better. Because a lot, let's be real honest, a lot of females do not leave their husband. Right. Especially right. they got their lifestyle they need it. And I said, listen, it go cheat. Let me know what's going on. So I guess she said, you're going to talk about the lady. She said, the other hoes ain't asking no permission. Why I'll make you different? And I said, mm -hmm. that's when she started seeing the tree in Mercedes. I said, all right, all right, yeah. So well, I wouldn't even mad at Mercedes, too, when she said that, like, look, I need to meet the wife. You say she know what's good, then I need to know what's good. Because basically, you're going to have a contract over me. 
And I need to meet your wife to see if she's really good and down with this. So I'm going to get everything that I need about this. I ain't got to worry about this whole coming at me later. Especially that offer, child. We ain't finna do it. So, child, we have Terika pulling up to the Breath of Life Church to get a food basket right now. First of all, when she pulled up, she damn near hit the church workers as she was pulling up. She hit the brakes so damn hard. They was like, whoa, good God, woman. So one of the church ladies goes over to the window and Terika's like, yes, can I get a food basket? And um, the woman gets ready to hand her a basket. She was like, well, can I get two? And she was like, well, typically it's only one per household. And Terika tells the church, say, well, yeah, I want to get one for my neighbor too. You know, like the Bible says, love thy neighbor. And so when she quoted the Bible, the church lady was like, oh, I just love that to see little yes. young kids. That's so giddy. <laughs> get so, so giddy. Talk about Pastor Woodbine, come on over here and see this young child right here. Because she wanted to ask Pastor Woodbine if she could give her two boxes. So Pastor Woodbine, Patrice, with her goddamn crooked ass, come over and was like, hey, what you calling me for? What you want? So she sees her and she's like, this young lady right here is asking for an extra food basket for her neighbor. And I thought that was just so sweet because you teach the Bible. And, and Pat was like, okay, I got it from here. And the woman kind of was like, uh, okay. And she see the woman kind of like, oh, bitch, all right. School out, school over. I'm trying to do your work. So Terika kind of got smart with uh, Patrice because uh, Patrice was like, uh, Terika, Terika say Patrice. Patrice said, uh, little nigga, don't let this kind of fool you. I will mop the floor with your ass. She's like, oh, grandmother. I'm sorry, yeah, grandmother. I'm saying, shoot. Sure. Let's show you right now. The bitch did crack. Hey, J-Dub. I'm just popping in and say, hey, love y'all. Get my ass back to work. Love, the you, too. Back. love you too, boo. <laughs> yeah, she let her know real quick. I said, oh, I ain't no Patrice over here. I still grandma. Even Patrice we don't said, know. don't get it twisted. Yeah. Devil in this collar or not, and you still know who the hell grandmama is. So she asked her, like, what is you doing driving the car? And what did you do over here, you know, for a food basket? Where is Shell? And she was like, well, Shell is asleep. And she was like, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, she sleep? And she was like, yep, yep, she sleep. And so Patrice could see something was sort of going on by the way she gave that look to Terrica. And she mm -hmm. even reached out and put her hand on the face. She was like, you know, you look just like Mercedes when you lying. Mm -hmm. So she told the church lady to go ahead and give her four food baskets. Because I guess she could see, okay. Something is going on. I don't quite know what it is, but I could tell something is going on. So she went ahead and gave her, you know, full of low food baskets or whatnot. What did you think about that, Miss? Do you think she know what's going on in the house or she just feel bad because that's her granddaughter? So I'm going to just give you a couple of extra baskets. Yeah, I think a little bit of both. Because despite, yes, but she is a B. We know she's, she's nasty. She rude. She ruthless. But I was like, you know, sometimes even the meanest one do care for their granddaughters or yeah. grandchildren. So it's like they don't like to see them kind of like out and out. And especially she a teenager herself and she know how it is, despite her struggles with her own daughter. It's like she's hungry. She's driving this car. It's the middle of panorama. You know a lot of people probably lost their jobs and everything. So it's like they up here just drinking, smoking their life away and everything happened. So mm -hmm. I was like, and then she driving the car and everything. So you know what? She not to be. I ain't gonna have my grandfather baby hungry. So let me give her some food. So I think it's a little bit of both. Like she senses something, but she didn't press on. But mm -hmm. she was like, nah, I can't have my grandbaby be all crazy. And I said, and I make the rules here. So give her four boxes. <laughs> yeah, she could tell something was going on though. But I appreciate Patrice for at least having that kindness in our hearts and not press and go ahead and get her some food. So Lil Bird and them, they in this little convenience store because, you know, they on the road. They're doing a Dirty Dozen tour. They on the road. And they in this little convenience store. And this little white girl behind the counter is like, oh, shit. It's a store full of niggas. Let me get my hand on this uh, police alert just because in case these niggas want to do something. She was really scared. True enough, they all had masks on. Y'all up in there looking like bloods and crips. I've been scared, too. I'm just seeing a white girl, her little little <laughs> trembling. Yeah, she was trembling. Yeah. <laughs> Susan didn't want no parts of them niggas. So it just so happened Keyshawn come out the bathroom and kind of breaks it up because she was getting ready to hit that alarm. Yeah. So she comes in and she kind of breaks it up or whatnot. And so they all put their little food on the counter. LaMurda asked her for a postcard. And when he asked for the postcard, I already knew in the back of my mind, oh, he been sent off a clip of little postcard. I don't know. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so 
you know, he buys a postcard, they buy their little snacks or food or whatnot, and then they go outside and they have like this little photo shoot or whatnot. You know, I just, it was just cute. I thought it was really cute. They doing a little photo shoot or whatnot out there on the car. And like I said, a little white girl got scared because um, she thought, <laughs> she yeah. thought she was finna get, get uh, goddamn get got up in there. What did she think? <laughs> and you seen them out there doing a little photo shoot. I thought the photo shoot that they did on a little hearse was cute, child, on the hearse. Um, let me see. Okay, so back over here at the club, you got Big Bone behind the bar, and you have Uncle Clifford and uh, Haley talking. Haley is saying that they need a new headliner for the club because Uncle Clifford was just looking at IG. You know, she's stalking um, Lil Murder's page, his IG page, and she sees him and Keyshawn taking pictures, and she's like, oh, they having fun on their little tour, whoop de whoop Haley is like, well, we need a new headliner for the club. How about you ask them, go ahead, come on, swing over here come to the club so you know we can get some more revenue or whatnot that's coming up in here so she says that um uncle cliff would say hell no nah, because he doesn't want another repeat of little murder night that they had had the night before he also says that it's um and he doesn't want a night like they had just the night before when big l damn near burnt the kitchen down yeah and so he's, the damn gosh. thank you to try to burn the damn wings and so Haley was like well it's your fault because you left and he was like uh it's only 15 percent my fault 85 percent you 85 percent there so basically he's trying to negotiate his way down so they ended up negotiating it to at this 69 percent to his 31 percent now which was a whole lot better than 85 15. so i'm glad uncle clifford able was even why they have you complicated could it be the 60 40. girl why it be the 70 30. <laughs> it's like why gotta be 69 31. like i don't <laughs> That was so. I was like, okay, that extra one percent. I said, all right, do it. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So then, Big Bone put in some track and they danced or whatever to the track, and Uncle Clifford was liking it at first, whatever, right? He was getting it. So Haley says that she wants Whisper and Roulette to headline. Uncle Clifford's like, hell no, nah, because you know Mercedes gonna have a goddamn fit. But if we do it, you tell it it's your goddamn idea to do it, and it wasn't my idea. Haley was like, uh uh, remember, I'm only 69% in charge. You got more. <laughs> nah, don't try to backtrack now. Sure. I like that though, the way she said that. She said, uh uh, it's 69%. The Earth 31 is yours. You got that, right? So she also says that she needs a new DJ. Big Bone is like, I do it. Uncle Clifford, like, hell no. Nah. An auxiliary record on your phone. That's not no DJ. No, but you were just raising your hand to whole music. So you were just. You were just teeny bopping to it a few minutes ago. Like, what's the problem now? So he was like, Well, you can't be no worse than Big L. So, you know, to hell with it. We're going to go ahead and test you out. Now, how do you think she going to do behind a DJ booth and a bar? That's what I say. I say, I don't know what's going on, but Big Mother, no her hustle. Like, she tried to work her way, something like that. Because she do it. She's like, As long as I got this ass, I can rule her. Doing the DJ. I said, You do multi trading. I said, You might have. Come on, girl, get your get your little accolades. Say, baby, as long as I got all this ass, I can rule the world. I don't need personality. I got I got clappers, yeah, okay? I got clappers and use what I need to do. <laughs> so we are at this black pastor's chicken dinner. I said, if there ain't the most ghettoest, blackest ass name for a church picnic, Patrice kind of redeemed herself this episode just a little bit when she gave old girl them, them food baskets. I will say that. When she gave her them four food baskets, because she kind of knew something was up. But this is when I kind of like Patrice just a little bit here at the Black Pastor's Chicken Dinner. That chicken did look good, though. You know, I'm sure them all church ladies had chickens and greens and cornbreads, those sweet the potatoes. Corn, the neck and cheese. That's a oh, yeah. neck ball of calling a bike. Oh, I ain't mad at them. But the old pastor, the one that Patrice used to be under, he's basically... He's got the back of one of the Kyle brothers because the one who's stepping in is his interim governor or whatever right now since Mayor Ruffinum passed away. He's there speaking to all the black pastors because he basically wants to get their vote if he does decide to run for a mayor of Chuckalisa, right? So you got the other pastor basically kissing his ass like, yeah, you can believe me and my congregation will be there to vote for you and blah, 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 blah. But you got Patrice Woodbine in the back. She was like, yeah, y'all trying to get this thing off of this casino. Yeah, casino. That's what y'all want, this casino. Yeah, I mean, I want. Put some money into these schools. 
teach us how to read so we can get jobs in the casino. Because basically she was right. I was like, at the end of the day, it's like, yes, y'all trying to back these people up to get what y'all want. But at the end of the day, when they get it, y'all basically don't get no jobs. Y'all don't get no stuff in there. They ain't putting the money in their own pockets. Y'all just, just basically vote for them and not get no um, benefits. It's not going to get nowhere near so it. I was like, no, y'all can fool yourself if y'all want to vote for this thing. But let you know now, y'all won't be getting no benefits out of this. So y'all better rise up. I appreciate her for that because she did say something that did make some sense. And then she was like, and who made this chicken? It's dry. <laughs> <laughs> now you, know, you, some some bitch. you don't know no. you got to critique some chicken <laughs> you know i'm one of them women too i'm gonna critique i'm uh because i'm a chicken connoisseur okay i'm going to critique your damn chicken if it ain't good i'm gonna put it on the plate and i'm gonna put my napkin over it that's how you gonna know and i'm gonna slide that bitch on in the trash can Anyways, though, y'all, we got Big Frida, the Big Queen Diva, please believe her, was performing. Yeah, I love you some Frida, baby. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you gotta get it, boy. Yeah. She was performing, and I love, oh, man, every time I was supposed to go to a Big Frida yeah. concert here, something always came up. But Big Frida was performing, and you got Lil Murder in them. I guess they're going to pe- be performing after yeah, uh, after Big Frida performs. It's performing. So you go backstage, and you can see um, Mississippi got her room laid. She got strawberries. She got wine and all that set and the other. You know, Ron got her set up nice. Then you got Lil Murder walking in. He like, damn, water, where my strawberries? What he like, nigga, you's allergic to them shits. Allergic. He's like, I don't give a damn with my strawberries and my Benadryl, nigga. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> I ain't even doggone mad at him. Where my strawberries and my doggone Benadryl? So he's like, um, Keisha, well, before we get to that, Rome is taking pictures supposed to IG. And as he's taking them pictures, Keyshawn is like, damn, you posted that already? He was like, yeah, this is going to go viral. Everybody's going to see this. And she was like, well, Dan, you know, you posted it already? And he's telling her, man, your boyfriend don't know who Blue Guap is. Like, he don't follow Guap on IG. Yes, he and do. I was like, um, Mississippi, I say, Keyshawn, you left him. We look like he ain't going back. You left him, left him. And you still worried about how you going to find out? I said, girl, I said, you think you're still good? <laughs> <laughs> you still still worry, but you know she been with him since she was young, so you know he still got a hold of her, you know, no matter what. But I said, girl, you gotta amp up. You did your decision. You made your choice. You put him. You put him sleep like bread on no chest. So you better make we sure no chest, right? Think good and and don't be worried about Derek. Don't be worried about. But him. then you got, like I said, go out took that picture of Mercedes. I mean, of Mississippi feed and little murder strawberries, and that's what he posted. Knowing Keyshawn yeah. baby daddy is uh, a goddamn on that crazy ass uh, stalker white boy yeah. shit. He crazy, so you gonna have to be careful with all of that. Yeah. But you know, he claims ain't nobody gonna see it because he don't follow the page or whatnot. So afterwards, you see like a montage of them, like different mo- um of them going on tour it's a like a music video but it's them in different cities or whatnot that they going through i thought that was cool the cinematography was bomb the way that they did that i absolutely loved it i thought it was so bomb so afterwards child you got mississippi child she pulls up to a building and she got to get a covid test before she can go in right terica calls her yeah Terrica ends up calling her and was like, you know, um, asking when are they going to start back with their dance classes or whatnot. And she was like, why are you asking? Shell ain't going to let you come back. No way. And she was like, oh, well, I just want to see. Well, anyways, what you doing? And she was like, well, I'm working. I got to call you back. As soon as she hangs up, you can see Terrica, the, the camera pans out to Shell. She knocked out drunk sleep on the couch. And I felt bad for her. It's like you got this woman who. Stepping in to be your mama, she laid out drunk everywhere. Then you try to call your real mama, and she too busy to even talk to you. Like, you gotta be hard on that baby. She's in the middle place. I can't. It's a tough one. And I feel bad for them. Yeah. So you see Mercedes get up in the building. She's champagne, and you know, she's taking pictures because she's like, wow, this is beautiful. It's nice. This is real nice. Oh, this is nice. (laughs) <laughs> so she's taking pictures and then you see this beautiful dark skinned woman she's at the top of the stairs and mercedes is like oh hi 
And she comes down and she gets ready to shake her hand. She was like, oh, my name is Mercedes. I see me. She's like, I'm fair. And she snubs her. And she said, oh. Like, kind of snubs her, doesn't shake her hand or nothing like that. And so, I know she said, oh, you must be fabulous. She's like, I am. Yeah, I said, this is just, oh. she must be fair. She's like, I'm Mercedes. And so she snubs her. She doesn't shake Mercedes' hand. She walks past her. And Mercedes is kind of like, mm, all, right. all right. So Mercedes <laughs> says to Fair, she's like, I like this house. It's real beautiful. <laughs> and Fair say, you mean beautiful? Even I was like, bitch, that was so ghetto and so country. Why you yes. like that saying? <laughs> you should have said, oh, this is pretty. Yeah, this is pretty. Like, keep it cute. Like, like. <laughs> I was like, she said, you mean beautiful? Yeah, this real beautiful. She's like, <laughs> you mean you? That's we can try to discuss her. Pause, though. I used to have this nigga that had a crush on me. He was so cute, but he would talk just like that. I call it that scrappy talk. Like, you real beautiful to me. Every time I'm looking at your eye, you're like, you're just real beautiful. And I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> He like, I like him when I make you blush like that. I think myself, no, nigga, you sound stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not making me blush. I'm trying to have your fucking stupid ass face, but you cute though. You cute. So anyways, coach ends up coming down and I see he got some paperwork in his hands or whatnot. She like, hey, coach, you look much, much different in the light than you do in the dark. Because the first thing I thought, that's not the same coach. I think they changed, the, they changed the, I think they changed the coach. Yeah, because that's the first thing I thought. Yeah, I think him. The last coach was not like that. He was different. So it was like he was, I think they changed the actor. Wasn't the last coach Brandy Baby Daddy from Queens? I think that's who that was. Baby Daddy from Queens. Brandy Baby Daddy from Queens. He was the last coach. I think so. I think it was. I got I his name, I but yep, Brandy Baby Daddy. That's Coach. That's what we finna call him in here. So Coach or whatnot, he ends up coming downstairs and he got a contract in his hand. And him and Mercedes end up exchanging pleasantries or whatnot. And so the coach ends up, another wife ends up going up to the coach and kisses him in the mouth or whatnot, gets the paperwork, and then gives the paperwork to Mercedes and was like, okay, we're going to need you to sign pages three, four, four, 68 through 65, and a couple of these NDAs. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying, I was saying, I was I was saying, <laughs> I was like, she was big no business. She said three, four, six, five, thirty-five, couple of NDA. She said, what the fuck? Yeah, and I was saying, yeah, if you gonna get this money, you want to like that, you better keep your mouth shut. You better know there's some legalities going on, and you better sign these papers. And if you want, if you want this deal, which was freaking ten thousand a week in a condo. Child. Um, period pool i ain't even mad at the wife i ain't even mad at the wife like look here because he ain't going nowhere he's still gonna be married to me and taking care of me and that's on period and if you think you're gonna come up in here and do what you do bitch we finna sign these papers okay and then like i said later on we're gonna talk about it she was like oh bitch i'm not gonna be left out this here um mad problem he's right here but it ain't gonna happen that's the same that's not the same coach that don't look like the same coach from last season yeah, I don't think it was. I got to go back and look at I, that episode. I think it was different, but uh, hey. I feel more. like he was different, especially <laughs> that, that scene when Mercedes was giving him a lap dance when you could see his face on last season. That's not the same coach. Yeah, that's not the same. Yeah, she meant she Okay. Meant. Yeah, yeah, that's not, not the same coach. coach. Okay, but yeah. wasn't that that was Brandy's baby daddy? That was the coach, Brand, the one that played Brandy baby daddy in Queens. That's the one that was a coach from last season. He was dark skinned. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I know this. I think it's a well known actor. And I don't. Yeah, I, and I can't I remember his name. I don't think it was that one, but I know it was a well known he actor. Was sexy chocolate. Oh, he was sexy and chocolate and oh. all of that. I don't think it was the baby dad. I think it was somebody else. But you know his face. I know. I know, know it. Him. I know it. Yeah. Um. We so know. yeah, she signs the papers or whatnot, tells her that, and walks away. And she's just looking at Coach like, "What the fuck?" Coach is like, "Well, she." What you want me to do? <laughs> oh, but then that's that's how it should have been. Like if you had a lot of money, if you're an athlete, it's like that. You, you gonna have this deal. That's why a lot of these freaking athletes and whatever the celebrities are getting screwed over by these people who want to be loose mouth because they don't sign these freaking forms it's like that. Mm-hmm. Keep it right. Protect your money. If you gonna do this, protect yourself. But then you again, do like, it. Do it right. Do it right. It's like that's how you're supposed to do it. It's everything. Sign paper. So you want to break it, then you need to suffer the consequences. And I know a lot of people would have kept their mouth shut. Sure. 
Why you mess with a coach, celebrity, and everything? You think I would speak? No, I can let me sign some papers and keep it up. Keep the keep it in your deal. Thank you. And I keep my, <laughs> my deal and I keep my mouth shut. That's what it is. So, child, we is after the um at the little club scene and whatnot with um little murder performing. We got Wardy sitting up here bathing in hand sanitizer. I ain't mad at him because I was doing the same doggone thing. And Teak looking at him like, nigga, really is that necessary? Wardy like, I ain't caught the Rona yet. So, uh, believe me, I'm good. Pico walks in and he basically. Pico walks in and um, Teak sees Pico and he's like, why is that nigga rocking that blue and that gold now? Like, where did this come from? And Wardy tells Teak, he, he started walk, rocking that blue and gold ever since your boy and him got into an argument or whatnot, right? Ever so, since then, like him. Okay. Yes, ever since then, he ain't like him, right? Mm -hmm. So, Pico sees Big Teak and he tries to walk up to him and like say what's up to him and Teak kind of like you know what nigga you know fuck you I ain't really finna talk to you and it's like they kind of finna get into it because Pico was like nigga really it's like that and Teak even tells him like yeah you know what I'm saying it's like that or whatnot so Wardy comes in and he breaks it up and Wardy still lets it be known that basically him and Pico was still good I don't give a damn I ain't got nothing to do with that little gang shit they got going on whoop de whoop yada 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 that ain't got nothing to do with me right now, Rome says to Wally, where your boy at? Because the crowd is getting restless. They ready to go. Pico says that, um, oh, no, no, you're a little murder. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Rome said, <laughs> I got thrown off for a minute. Rome says, um, you know, well, where's your boy at? You know, we need to come to the stage. Whoop through, yada, yada, yada. He said, let me go get him. So then Pico says to Rome, like, oh, so you managing uh, La Murder? He was like, hell no, nah, I ain't managing La Murder. I'm managing Mississippi. And so there was a homeboy that was with Pico. Pico homeboy is like, damn, you managing Mississippi? That's a uh, La Murder bitch. Like, damn, she bad this, that, and the other. Pico turns to his homeboy. is like, man, that ain't his bitch. Pico homeboy was like, what you talking about? La Murder, keep a bad bitch with him all the time. Then Pico says, well, when he comes out with his next new album, Trade Secrets, then we're going to see what you talk about then. Then you're going to owe me a couple of blue faces. Rome hears him when he says that. Rome like, nigga, what you talking about? Mm -hmm. Trade and Secrets. Was it Trade se Trade Tales? That's what it was. Tales. When you hear the, the new song called Trade Tales, then you're going to see what's up. And Rome kind of give him a look like, what the hell you mean by that? What did you think when he said that? Because I was like, wait a minute. Yes, I wait was like, he was trying to put it out there, but not try to say it directly. He would try to put it, some little hits in people's head, and they, especially one whatever, if they heard. Because he he was a whisper of Lolly. He would try to put it out there yeah. to try to hit that. Little murder is not the what y'all think he is. Uh -huh. you know, like that. And he would perpetrate it. And that's what it is. And yes, Dominique Boutique is fine. When, he has, when I saw him stand up, he got the muscle mass and everything. I was like, oh, okay, cute. But yes, he was trying to put it out there a little bit, a little hint. He said, oh, you find out what this new song is and everything, and it's going to be something. So he was like, hmm. But I said, all right, you better go ahead and peek. You going to open your mouth too much. You better stop it. Pico, yeah, you better shut up because it's gonna come back. Um, the murder or Teak be and killed your ass because, um, I think Teak know, but we're gonna get into that in just a few minutes. So, y'all, we back at the house with Mercedes, Coach, and Fair. They all having a drink, and Mercedes is looking at the photos on the wall. And she's like, I like the photos you got on your wall, Coach. And he tells her that Fair did that, right? And basically, he kind of sort of tries to downplay it or whatnot. Like, yeah, she did this and blah, 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 blah. Like, he's not really giving her her props for it. And I like the way Mercedes stood up and Mercedes was like, no, nah, look, it's, I like the way you did this and you did that and da, 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 da. From that moment when Farrah looked at Mercedes, the way she was explaining the art, I already doggone knew. I was like... She liking my stuff. She know what she's talking about. She got some sense going on. Because she thinking that because she a stripper, she was dumb. She thought she was going to be stupid. Yeah. She was dumb. And I was like, and when she explained things, it's like how the thing and how she had her words, she was like, oh, okay. So I see why um, my husband is a treat by you. It's like that. It's like that. Now, did they say that the murder was in jail? Uh, he the murder was in jail. The murder was in jail. Yeah, we're talking about that at the end. Yeah. Together in a jail, but everything. But I could see 
some tension going on between them. I don't know. I want to take it that far, but I was saying, let's, oh. see, let's, uh, I said, let's see how that goes. But I could still see like kind of like a brotherly kind nah, of. Nah, I see some more than that. But it may be a little bit more. I don't know. I wouldn't automatically would go there, but I would say it may be a little bit more because the way how they're looking at each other, the energy, you could just feel it. And I was like, something looked like going on with these two. More well, than a protector and bodyguard kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach ends up getting a phone call when they all sit down having drinks and he goes and takes a phone call, right? And so Fair tells Mercedes, like, you know, this is my first time. I've never met any of his other hoes before. And Mercedes, like, I ain't no hoe. And she's like, please, you getting 10K a week to fuck, 10K a week and a paid condo to fuck my husband. That's, that's whole shit. Like I said, I don't know where you from, but that's whole shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know where you came from, but that is. That's whole shit. So she asked, like, why do you need my, per like, why even ask my permission? You don't need it. And I respect Mercedes. She was like, look here, I respect what you say. Like, if you would have been like, no. You can't yeah, fuck around with my yeah, husband, yeah. then I respected that, and that's what it is. You know, whoop the whoop, yada yada yada. So Fair gets up to leave after Coach comes back from his phone call. She was like, Well, I'll leave you guys to your bed. And Coach is like, No, nah, you got yeah. to see the Mercedes yeah. experience. You got to see what this is like. Yes. And the wife is like, Fair is like, No, you don't have to do yeah. that. Mercedes, just because she sits on G waiting on O all day, she like, bitch, yeah, I got my phone right get here. Ready, to get ready. That's what she Give said. me an auxiliary record, bitch. I can plug this shit up and I can drop it like it's hot right now. Cha, how ironic was it that Coach just so happened to have a pole already built in the house? Pole built in the house. I would say, okay. So, did you have holes in the house before? You know, um, whatever. <laughs> did it just got there? Did family know? Like, what's go? I was like, you get that, you I said, build it for me. me. Hold it. You got it built for me. So, whenever you come over, I can be your private dancer whenever you want. Really? Is that what this is? Oh, okay. Okay, that's what we're doing. But, baby, she gets on that pole. Her shoulder still got the get you, get you, ya that pain up in it. But she goes to work she and she does. Out. What she does, okay, because that's Mercedes. In the middle, it. she kind of had a gummy one, like the the ringtone went up. You know, you in the middle and you and your vibe, and then the ringtone go off. It was like I'm a gummy bear. <laughs> You're a gummy. Oh, so I was like, how <laughs> the Why the hell you had that ringtone for your yes, daughter? Yes, to Terica. <laughs> but she oh, had to hurry up and you know pause it in it because Terica was calling her, but she had to pause it in it because you know she was in the middle of trying to work on this 10K and this condo or whatnot, right? So she's steady, you know, dancing on coach or whatnot. The phone is steady, doggone ring, ringing. And this whole time she's looking, Farrah is just looking at Mercedes in complete awe. Like, she was like, oh my fucking God. She can't yes, believe she what she doggone see it, child. She was it. She then was Mercedes, baby, she is, she, she's loving what she loves the Mercedes experience, okay? So then she goes over and Mercedes goes and starts to give Coach a lap dance. She's taking Coach's tie off. Next thing you know, she look over her shoulder. Baby Farrah, the wife, she didn't right. make it. Right. Close that she in. I said, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> are you got to do this? We got a contract. Let's go. I said, no, you're not. She took off her clothes and her bra real quick. And that was she like went. a split five seconds because I was like, where the hell you took that clothes off so quick before? <laughs> That was funny. Mercedes was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, this is a part of the 10K in the condo. <laughs> but uh, Sam said, listen, I will get an experience too. Listen, you got me hot and bothered. So whatever. If we don't touch each other, we this doing something. <laughs> she say, uh, look her up. <laughs> <We don't> <laughs> <laughs> I was saying she put she took that close. We gonna get it in. We gonna get it all the way in. I said okay, all right. Well, in between this time, real quick, you have a quick scene where Andre is on the phone with his wife, and of course, if we find out, at first I thought she was a nurse, but she's actually a doctor in the ER working on C nineteen patients, and she wants him to come home. Of course, he keeps lying to her and saying that the real weeding the the will reading has been pushed back mm -hmm. i wonder what he's up to well no we find out later on in the end what he's up to but in the beginning i was like this nigga is sketchy he's up to something i don't trust his ass yeah, that's what i'm thinking at first like, come on now your wife is fighting for um risking her life and, and i hope she don't die uh, yeah it's like come on 
I hope she don't die on die. Well, child, so while Mercedes is giving a Mercedes experience to both Coach and his wife, she put it on both of their ass. The gummy bear ringtone goes off again, and she's thinking it's Terrica. So she runs to the phone and like, Terrica, I told you I'm working. Don't call me. It's Sheriff Jesse. She like, Sheriff Jesse, what you doing calling me? Well, come to find out, he called her because he had pulled Terrica over for underage driving. And she was like, well, what is she doing driving? She don't even have no car. And it was like, yeah, well, the owner of the car is passed out drunk in the back seat. Mm -hmm. So he was like, well, if you don't come here and get Terrica, you know, both of them don't, they, both of them finna go to jail. And that ain't no place for no drunk person or nobody that's underage. I feel bad for Terrica, man. Like, mm -hmm. I just felt so bad for Terrica in that moment. But like I said, um, Shell in the back seat passed out drunk. And, and luckily, Sheriff Jesse called Mercedes to come and pick him up and didn't just take both of their ass down there to goddamn jail. Like he should have done because Shell out here drunk, got that baby out here going to goddamn Patrice Wood buying for motherfucking food baskets. Anyways, oh y'all. Okay, afterwards, little murder. After he performed, they walking out to the car, and it's a female that comes up to him, like trying to get his attention. She like little murder, little murder, like damn, excuse you, little murder. And so Pico comes and tries to get her attention. Was like, you know, hey, little mama, what's up? She was like, nigga, is your name little murder? Like, damn. And he was like, oh damn. Beetle, and I said, little murder, little murder, little murder. I said, cool. Oh, that's it is. Like, <laughs> call his name like you act like she like she had to. Oh, kids by him or something. I said I would be in plot twist because I don't why she screaming his name like that. She yeah. was screaming name like a few like a full fledged baby mama. Yeah. Child Pico, like I said, he tries to grab the arm and she like niggas, your name little murder. He was like, damn bitch, whatever. And she was like, bitch. Then you have Teak that comes over. Teak like, hey, don't disrespect the women like that. Like she told you she don't want nothing to do with you. Like move around. Pico say, well, bitch, you ain't his type anyway. As soon as he says that, Teak ends up punching Pico in the mouth. They end up fighting. First, Pico is whooping Teak's ass all on top of him. Then Teak ends up getting the best of Pico. Whooping. whooping the dog shit out of him again. I'm like, damn, Pico. Oh, well. And then oh, once he was getting his behind whip, then his boy wanted to start shooting. I said, Dad, y'all want to start shooting? I was like, come on now. Then they start shooting. Now, this whole time, you got Keyshawn on live. She recording everything as it's going down on live. So everybody's seeing it as the shit is going down, right? So the girls back at the paint, all the dancers, they all on live, like watching Keyshawn's live is all this shooting and all of this shit is going on, right? Now, Keyshawn, had you have just put that gun on your baby daddy, stayed at the paint. We wouldn't even be in this doggone situation, yeah. the first doggone place. But it is what it is. Oh, and before they leave, Rome says to LaMurda and them, now security going to need damn security because now you finna have all these niggas out here trying to fight you and shit. Oh, like, Try to start now. I'm going to be Teak. <laughs> <laughs> With his fine ass. Even though I don't like light-skinned niggas like that. He kind of creeped though. I give him that. So back at the paint, Roulette done started her period. And Whisper gives her a tampon. Whisper just come out the corner. Yeah, he just, he just, he just poof. <laughs> you got it. Where are you? You the tampon fairy? Where you come from? It's so sweet. You got, got it on go already. Smell I like, what the hell? So she after she gives her a tampon or whatnot, you know, Roulette goes in the bathroom on the toilet room trying to get herself together and Whisper says to Roulette, so you still didn't tell me where you from? And she's like, from hell, which confused me because the way they was dancing together, I'd have thought that they knew each other for a long time or something. I didn't know that they didn't know each other. People. He had an emotional affair. Worse than cheating. Yup. That's what that, um, what you call is guilty of. Andre, he's having an emotional affair with Haley. And that's what's going to really make his wife mad. But when Whisper asked Roulette where she was from, I thought they had already knew each other. I didn't know. Yeah, the way they was, looked like they was cool from the first episode. Looked like they was came together. And they just made it in together. But it was so funny. Uh, um, Roulette, Bucky Replica asked, that's the girl. Yeah, tell me where you from. She said, listen. How you got here? She said, listen, listen. I used to be rocking with the Zen there, but then I started listening to the rap music and everything. And I was all like, I said, girl, that rap music that turned you out. Like, <laughs> I said, girl, that turned me out. Little Wayne. And Little Wayne turned you out. Now you in the dark side. I said, girl, 
Which one? You is mysterious. I don't know He's what's going on. I, I can't put my finger on her. I didn't know it was a day or so fucking listen to Lil Wade and then you got all in the in the world. I said, child, yeah. girl. So then child whisper gives roulette a bump of coke. The way she hit that coke, she she hit that sucker so hard. I was like, damn. Why can't we use that at the line? Smoke weed. What are you doing? I the way you did that, I just only can do something. Typical use yeah. I said, oh, I expect that to use that. That was a lazy thing to use. Why they can just smoke? Hey, let's let's smoke this. Especially how you say he lives with Lou Wayne a lot. So you should smoke the weed and call it a day. <laughs> or something. Yeah, they're gonna bring that club all the way down. The both of them. I can already see it. Mm. So child, Uncle Clifford gets all the ladies together, tells them that they need to wear their mask, you know, because the rock is going around. Then Soya sneezes, child. I told you, damn, now I got hot. Yes, it was funny. You remember how the panorama was the first started? Yes, we were taking the light saws and everything out. The That's how I was with everybody. Don't come coughing yeah, around me. Your eyes better no water around me. Bitch, yeah. You better not sneeze. You better hold it in. I'm a light saw the hell out your dog on ass. Like, oh, I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> Child, so Uncle Clifford opens up the paint with his own pole work. Now, he surprised me. Bro, I was like. He surprised oh, me, baby. You got that in you. Like, you was doing the pole work to the flawless. And I say, you know what? That's what you wanted to paint. That's why you're the owner. Yes. You know what you're doing. Because I was like, because usually the owners don't even know how to do the pole work or something like that. Yes. Then, I, I was like, Uncle Clifford killed that pole like he gave one of his And if you have a section, well, you know, the people ain't ready for that, but you know, everybody loves Uncle Clifford. But like I said, we have people who are down with that. You could have had some going, Uncle Clifford. Sure, you better make your money. Uncle <laughs> Off on their pole, he had them clappers clapping. I was not mad at him. I was like, look at him, he was swinging around. He got Big Bone back there being a DJ. I ain't even mad at him. He went off. He was good. I was happy for him. And then you got um Big L. Duffy came. Child Duffy is back now. Duffy pull up to the paint. He crying. He's still feeling bad because he gave Gidget Mama COVID, and that's how Gidget Mama died. Cause she got she died of complications from COVID. So Duffy still felt bad that he gave Gidget Mama COVID. So he come crying to Big L. Big L like, boy, stop crying. Let's go in here and get this pussy. So they go on up in there and watch the girls dance and whatnot. I thought that was doggone funny. So after he watches them dance, you know, they backstage, Big L and Duffy. You have Whisper and Roulette. They come running backstage and whatnot, off stage because when they were on there dancing, like they had ended up taking their top off. And you know, Uncle Clifford Rule is you can't be naked. Oh, Roulette did. Roulette. Yeah. I know Roulette was on that high. I was Roulette like, was on that high because she was on that cold shit. So you can like be that. naked if you like you're in a paradise room or something like that. But out there in the public in the open while they serving liquor, you can't be naked. Like, Listen, turn up music off. I'll get up this guy. But he said, you know what? Whatever she let, let it go because he seen all that money being yeah. thrown. So Uncle Clifford didn't have a problem with it then when all that money was being thrown, right? So then afterwards, you got whispering roulette. Like I said, they got their big ass bag of money and they run to the back. Hey Joyce, yes, this is my birthday. Hey. The cash app is below. Holla at your girl. Ah, 42. <laughs> it was a so, like I said, they end up running off stage to the back, and Duffy sees Roulette, and so they kind of start flirting back and forth with each other. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem, because Gidget going to get a hold of that shit, and Gidget going to come back to the pink, and Gidget going to fuck Roulette up. I can see it now. Uh, like Gidget one part. Oh, no. Nah. Like my heart before she sells anything. I'm saying I don't know, but uh it's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on with that. I don't like the way I seen her flirting with big um yeah. with Duffy like that. Yeah, with Duffy. Excuse me. So we got Mercedes got shell in the tub, and she's spraying her ass down with some water in the tub because again, she was passed out drunk. And you almost got her, got um what you call it? Um Terica pulled over, which did get Terica pulled over, almost got them put in jail because your ass is drunk and she's trying to get out the house or whatnot right so they're arguing and shell's whole thing is 
I never wanted to be a mother to this child anyway. You know, your baby daddy, my husband, he was the one that always said he wanted her. He begged me to watch after her after he passed away. Mercedes was like, I begged you after he passed away for you to give me back to her. And so he was like, well, I made a promise to him that I will watch after you. He didn't want you to have her because he knew that she was a stripper and blah, 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 blah. This whole time that they're arguing, Terika is listening to them arguing because basically she hears Shell saying like, I, I don't want to be no mama. Like, I didn't want to be her right. mother. And I stayed loyal to a man who wasn't loyal to me when he was living. And she started cracking the hunts up. And I said, no, what that is ironic, though. That's she fucking said, oh. ironic. You staying loyal to a man in his death and he wasn't even loyal to you while he was living. Mm -hmm. At that point, go and give her back, child. Go and give her back because you ain't going to love on her the way she needs to be loved on. But yeah. Terrica hears everything that they say and and it brings tears to her eyes and later on her and mercedes have a talk about it like you know she asked mercedes like you were really 15 when you had me and she was like yeah and so you know she tells her i took care of you as long as i could i couldn't so i had to give you to him to take care of and terica was like well you weren't always 15 you could have came back and got me at any time but like mercedes was like i couldn't he like no courts was gonna give a stripper back their baby and so i just thought it was a real good you know mother daughter scene between the two of them something that they needed to have that was long over to overdue between the two of them where do you think their future is going to go between them you think terica is ever going to forgive mercedes i think she will because i know a lot of teenagers they don't understand the struggle their parents go through when they're growing up and everything until they become probably mothers themselves or try to, um, when they get adult to understand their mother. Because sometimes teenagers, they in an emotional state. So they ain't going to understand Mercedes like that. Yes, say was a stripper, 15 years old. She Yes, she lied about 18 years old, but still, it still, still don't get the right for the guy to take advantage of her like that. Got her pregnant and then don't mm -hmm. want her to have her own child when you're the one who knocked her up and everything. And then have his wife take care of her. Cause you didn't trust her. I say you slept with her. Like it was no big deal when you slept with a girl. Now all of a sudden it's, a, it's an issue. So it was like, it's a lot of layers going on. So when Mercedes told the story, I understand. I now understand what's going on. Yes. It may feel like excuses for, um, Terrica feel like she doing a lot of excuses, mm -hmm. which obviously is not as an adult. Like she could get her act together to take me back and everything, whatever. But she's not in that stage yet. She's trying to get her gym. I think she does have her own place, but it was like, is that good enough for having her and her daughter together right now while she's still stripping everything? I mean, you don't have to go to courts now. I mean, the mother is enabled, so maybe you could still take her. But I think Terrica got to understand that this life, life happens. And I was a teenage mom and stuff don't make, it's not easy. But then she say, yes, you're not a teenager. You're not 15 anymore. You're still an adult now. So Mercedes, and now is born in your court. You have the tools now to use do right by Terrica. And this is your chance. Cause if you don't, if you miss this opportunity, she would never forgive you anymore. She would, she would be mm -hmm. gone. She would be gone. So, Mercedes, you gotta work your plan. You better use the money for the, or you get from this ten thousand a week to try and do something. Uh, something. Now, um, back at the club, Big Bone is behind the DJ booth, all on top of the booth twerking. You' supposed to be spending the ones and twos. You back here getting your money. Niggas is throwing dollars all up at her, as well as you have another dancer that's in the back with one dude. The dude is asking for the dancer who's sucking dick because he said his homeboy told him it's a dance up in here that be giving sloppy top. And I knew that was what happened. That's gonna it's gonna come back. I would say, yeah, she's breaking the little rules. Thank you, Dominique. You got to tell everyone. And they talk. So if he's spending that money, you think he's not going to talk and tell his boys that these dancers doing it? So it's like, roulette, or roulette, Bucky replica, you got to work what you're doing because you're breaking out these rules and you're going to make it, you're going to bring out these rules. That's right. And it's going to be crazy. You're going to be a liability. Now it's okay for them. When you right. come a liability for their money, they're gonna let you go. They have to let you go. Mm -hmm. Feliz cumpleaños. Thank you, Boo. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate she you. She didn't even need her mom at this episode. She really needed her. Mm -hmm. but Mercedes had to get it together. She does. Now it's yeah. important to get it together for her. Yeah. 
Um, da, 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 da. So Andre sends a text message to Haley. Basically, he wants to know what's up with the deal. Haley says she's still holding out because a million ain't even the tip. So they went from 500, half a million to a million that they offering her. Again, Haley says she knows what the pank is worth. And now mm -hmm. Uncle Clifford tells Haley, you know, that Andre called to check out what the, you know, what's going on with the deal or whatnot. And she tells Uncle Clifford, I know what it's worth. Uncle Clifford is like, okay, well, at least now I know if you do sell, I get 3.1 million or something like that. He said, and she was like, good. Well, I, now I know you, you know how to count. Hill clips, hill claps. <laughs> click, click, click. I was like, I rain. Okay. So Andre is having a drink with, um, with Cor Kyle Corbin. Is it Corbin? Yeah, well, Corbin Kyle, because the Kyle brothers so having a drink with Cor uh, Kyle. He asked if Promised Land would really pay $10 million for the pink. And Andre says, yes, that they would. You know what I'm saying? But he just basically, he doesn't want to pay that. But he's saying if she was to get that, that she would be considered the most powerful woman in Chuckalisa, even more powerful, powerful than your brother, who's yep. the interim mayor. Andre basically throws an idea out there of him running for mayor. And Corbin is like, you know, basically kind of backs him up like you crazy enough to do that. And I just okay. might be crazy enough to back you up on that, to finance that. So I can see this shit going to be good. This is going to be yes. good. Yes. Like, so after he saw that tape, after he saw his real or uh, what his grandpa or uh, his godfather yeah. did, with people in the neighborhood and everything, and then he saw the tape, Thank it reassured him that he maybe, you know what, maybe I could do this. And I can see things going on. Because, yes, she does hold the card mm -hmm. of the bank, the land. Because that's why I tell people, it's like, sometimes your land worth a lot more than you trying to sell it because you want quick money. No, learn the worth of your land. Because that right there could get it. And they know they need that. That's why they're so hurrying trying to get mm -hmm. them to sell. Because they want that land. So she knows the worth of that. If they take that out and it will lose chunk chains and they can make more in the future, she knows mm -hmm. what that looks like. You can't get over Haley. So mm -hmm. I know Paul is frustrated and everything. And and Andre trying to make it work. So I don't know what he's gonna try and do with this one for mayor. But I like what he said work. right here. Merkai, is it Merkai? I hope I'm saying that right. I seen on another podcast they think Patrice will buy my backup Andre in his election against the mayor because Corbin said you don't even have a church, a brand, or a land. And that's when um, Andre did say he said I was born and raised in Chuckalisa. He said he did vote for the first black mayor of Chuckalisa, uh -huh. and he does have land there. So I'm wondering if the land means that he's now taking over Ruffin's estate since. He's been named what is it the 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 executive of his estate? So that would be the land he is from there. And if he would have had Patrice to back him up, bitch, oh that's so messy. That's how I work in the same Oh, that's messy. Okay, so Lil Murder going back to the room with Keyshawn. He got all these little groupie holes on him or whatnot. And he goes up to the key, to the door and Keyshawn opens the door and like kisses him in the mouth or whatnot. As she like like sloppy kisses him in the mouth. And as she's kissing him in the mouth, you see Rome go up. He looking in the back like, so is this dude gay? Is he with Keyshawn? Like what's and going on? He don't know what to think. Rome. It's one thing he probably is figuring out little murder, but also I could tell he really do like um, Mississippi. He, I, you can see his eyes. He mm -hmm. loved that girl. I don't know Keyshawn. He really he want her to go. But you can tell when they kiss. You can tell. Yeah, he trying to see it, but you can tell he was sad about it. He like he probably was. He probably was. Like Keyshawn, I think he really loves Keyshawn. It's not like he really trying to manage her. I think he really likes the girl. But she's in this messed up situation with this baby daddy. And exactly. Like and then on top of that, them them heifers was recording, taking pictures of Keyshawn kissing you in the mouth. Now Keyshawn, you know your white baby daddy is crazy now. You you know yeah, it was the trade tales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they back in the room, and Keyshawn is oiling Lil Murder Lil Murder scalp because she says, you know, you get danger. I don't know if it's from the bleaches in your hair. Or if you stressed out because of love, you got love stress. Because she sees him, he's you know writing a postcard to Uncle Clifford or whatnot, and he doesn't quite know what to say. And so Keyshawn is just basically giving him advice on what to say and blah 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 blah. 
And so he asked Keyshawn, like, I know what I did, but what did you do to get kicked out of the kingdom? And so she says, when she says, I couldn't believe in fairy tales. Basically, you know, diamond was going to be your knight in shining armor, but you messed that up. But it's dude, doggone the white boy, Derek. Oh, that just made me so mad. So, um, like I said, Mercedes is helping murder, you know, get the little postcard together, whatnot, for Uncle Clifford. And so they're playing around in the room. And T comes to the door and asks the murder to ride to the store with him, right? So they have this little moment where they're sitting on the stairs and they smoking a blunt or whatnot. And Teak is like, you know, uh, what did he say? Basically, he reminiscing about when they was in prison. He was like, you remember your first night there in prison? You know, such and such said this to you, blah, 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 blah. And um, some guy had approached Lil Murder and said something funny to him. And Lil Murder responded back to him being a smart ass. And so they got into a fight from there. And Lil Murder got shanked while he was in prison. Yeah. Well, Teak ended up coming back and killing the dude that shanked La Murder. And so Teak ended up going to the hole and he was down there for however knows how long. Yeah, now, know. this is what made me like, er? Mm -hmm. Teak said, you remember when I was down in the hole, you know, you would send me them, the the poems like as rhymes and, and the rhymes on the on the toilet tissue and that really kept me through and and I thank you for that that really it got real lonely down there and that's what helped me get through I was like and he said he didn't know how you got that do the God to give it to me I don't know yeah I don't and know I, how you got that pass of God to get that to me but I appreciate you yeah and it, it was just like the subtle it's like it was not being said but the energy was there. It's like oh, something it that they not said. Oh, it was them. It was like they looking at each other on passes, blunts towards each other, giving each other eyes like that. And it's the energy feeling. So I was like, is something more going on here with these two? <laughs> or unless something will, or they alluded to there was something will happen more to these two. Because I don't know. Because they got this little magnetism going on between each other. And it seemed like, yes, BT does look like Little Murder as Little Brother, and he got to protect them. But I just look like something looked more to that. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I ain't mad at you. Don't get your thug passion, baby. I ain't mad at him. You go ahead and get it on, okay? With Pico trying to out Big Tech, wasn't having that. Yes, exactly. He was trying to out him on the cool. He was like, you ain't finna be out my man's like that though. I didn't know that. I think Lil Murder gonna have to come out before the season ends because Big Baby Tech and Uncle Clip are gonna be fighting. Yes. <laughs> I can see. I don't know. I think somebody might know. lose it or might say it. Like I said, I think Little Murder, I think so with that how his popularity is, I think coming out will not be a bad thing. Because like that, because he is still value and he still desire but we'll see because sometimes in the rap game it is kind of and then on top of that if you think about it yeah. you perform for big freedom big freedom normally performs it's normally lgbtq people that are at her events yeah first so, thing i thought of is why you funny in the back end if he would have came up but at the same time might be a little bit accepted we'll see I don't know. We'll see. I don't know, but I'm here for it. You know what I'm Let um, I say I respect murder. Seeing Uncle Clifford postcards, yeah, sending him postcards, still <laughs> showing him. Guys, let him know I'm you, my woman, and I love you. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I ain't mad at him. So it was cute or whatnot. They had their little moment. Um, you know, Terrica and Mercedes again. They had their little mother daughter moment or whatnot. Uncle Clifford is, you know, he's getting postcards from Lil Murder. Every little city he's going to, he's getting postcards. And Uncle Clifford got them all on his little, you know, on his vanity in his room, you know, from, from Houston to Louisiana. But you don't want to return his texts or calls. It's like, come on now. But you know what? You love it on this man and you got his little postcards up. God answered that man, found Uncle Clifford, and it said, you look good and red. That should let him know that he was looking through the window and he sees in the mirror when you came over there to the house to let him know that I had never went on tour. Yeah, I, I don't know, know what to say. Maybe because he's like, this is something new. But I was like, you said what you said when you was at that door and you spoke from your heart. That's what you can put in a postcard. You don't have to be all thick, so thick. Well, you should Ain't it even on. <laughs> so, child, we got Patrice Woodbine with her goddamn cricket ass 
she gets a visit from Sheriff, uh, from Sheriff Jesse and from the interim yeah. Kyle brother saying that she is vi she's violating the social distancing order. And basically, this is revenge from when she came and acted the fool at the Black Pastor's chicken dinner. They basically trying to do anything they can to just piss her off and get up under her because she ain't, she wants to go against them when it comes to building that casino. So basically, they're trying to shut her, her church down. She's violating the social distancing order, so she's going to have to shut everything down. So she tells the sheriff and the, the mayor before he leaves, she was like, so where, where, are, we, where are we supposed to congregate? And pray away the sin that you're trying to bring into this town. And so the governor Kai said, wherever well, six or more or two or more are gathered within six feet, the Lord is there. It don't matter. So Patrice tells him, well, you fucking with the wrong bitch. I'm like, Pastor Woodbine, really? Yeah, you took the church out of her. <laughs> the church went out of her. That, that, oh, little, right. like that. But I would say, um, Patrice, you resourceful woman. Just put... Just do what it is. What you have have to social distance, lot, social distance, and televise it. Like, like <laughs> they gonna be doing like to televise it. Like you can still make your money in sermons if you do it the right Street way. Stream on Facebook and, like, and put the cash app up. Sure, but that's the wrong way. way. But you don't fuck with the wrong. You have, the club, that's what you're <laughs> you have the club with all these people capacities in there, and you're not saying nothing yeah. to them, which I don't understand that. Mm. But at the same time, it's like that's that. You do your thing right, and you don't get your thing shut down because this, this is a small church. You ain't, you ain't putting the money like the pink. So she got on like Patrice. So anything they can do to get Patrice on the fire, that she got to go. Uh -huh. So child, we got Big L and we got Duffy. They're in the back and they move an oxy right. And now as they move an oxy, we see Roulette getting out of a car, and she tells the driver of the car, "And let me know if you want another Roulette experience. So you want to take, yeah, you want to take Roulette out for another spin." And she's getting ready to turn around and walk into the paint. Duffy and Big L just so happen to drop a box and all the oxy files out the box. Yeah, they right. stop and they make eye contact with Roulette. Roulette makes eye contact with them. Yeah. Basically, like, nigga, I see y'all in here pushing weight doing some illegal shit, and they look at her like, bitch, we basically see you doing some illegal shit too. So I have a feeling either she gonna try to blackmail them to get in and get on a piece of that deal, or something is up with that. But I can see yeah, Duffy, Duffy and Roulette that so ain't gonna be good. Judge, you don't mess up my thing, I don't mess with your thing. So let's keep it keep uh, keep it quiet. But I'll say y'all just happened to drop the box. Y'all too strong. Y'all ain't had to drop the box. I said that was a clumsy drop. Cause they saw her. To, Bloom. I said, no, y'all could have kept that core, kept that key. Y'all had to drop the box. Y'all was not it's not like she it's like she it's not like she scared y'all to enough that you dropped the box. Like it's not like you did you saw her and then you dropped the box. I said that was dumb. That was that dumb. Was dumb. Man. I was dumb. I she she was it wasn't even that big of a day for her to catch y'all in the act. You got drop shit. I listen. I was. I like, don't trust Roulette, but I can see her either blackmailing her way to get in on this, or her somehow way. Her and Duffy are gonna hook up, and Big L is gonna be in the middle of that. And I don't trust none of that. I never understood the oxy sales when they were behind the money, and I thought Uncle Clifford knew about that because he put it in the office in the first season. That's what I thought too. So why why is he being so sneaky about it? Well, you hear the clip coming on the next episode where Big L told Dama, "Yeah, I need you. You were, no, uh, no, yeah, no, you no, were the, no, yeah, no, you know where the bodies are buried." No, yeah. L took a private deal with Duffy. Uncle Coffee don't know that. He took a private deal. Remember last season? He was supposed to stop that. He and was supposed to stop. Yeah, stop Big L put, took a private deal. So Uncle Coffee don't know he pushing the product inside that thing like that or selling it in that point because he's supposed to stop doing what he needs to do because they don't want no trouble in the paint that's what that's what the whole thing especially when they like the phone calls and stuff mm -hmm. anything that would have been crazy but big l being big l as he is he took a private deal with duffy and he said no i'm gonna do this that's right you're right uncle like don't know who think he stopped yeah. that's right this episode, but this episode was good. I was all the way here for it. I'm so excited for this season because it is so much sneaky shit going on. I want to see what's going to happen with Pico and La Murda because it is something between them two. I don't know what it is, but it is something between them two. And when Uncle Clifford find out, it's going to be a problem. Uncle Uncle Clifford going to whoop Teak ass. <laughs> The claws. He's gonna whoop his ass. He don't play about his back. Coming out, <laughs> the windmill gonna start coming. 
This is a windmill, okay? <laughs> I can't wait until the whole crew is back together next episode. Yes, Diamond. Yeah, Diamond, Diamond is the next crew. Crew. We we know, we know. Back, But he's going to come back. Because we know in the previews of the trailer that he came back to the paint. But I'm ready. He, he was coming back anyway because he got fired from his job. But from Ooh, the film, he's going to come back. But yes, um, Diamond's the only one who probably know what the body is buried and everything because... Yes, he said you have to worry about it because I know what's going on. I make sure nobody get caught. So I was like, Diamond knows what's going on. So you're making it. I'm here for what y'all. Mm-hmm. So y'all be a little you. sloppy around there. Y'all be a sloppy. So <laughs> what you got going on the rest of this week, Mizzle? You got anything else going on? So uh, tomorrow is my own review of Atlanta Housewives and the, um, the Paint Pea Valley. So I'll do my live tomorrow around 7 or 8 o'clock. And then uh, my Tuesday review of catfish will be up on wednesday and thursday i'll be home and thursday i was going to do a watch along on discord of the verses of Amario and mario and some of the people do the verses and i was thinking about doing an after show live of the verses so that'll probably be the verses around nine o'clock right eastern so probably the verse um the after show probably be 11 10 11 depending how mm-hmm. long this is it's usually mm-hmm. a two-hour event, right? Mm-hmm. Two hours. So about eleven o'clock, we just like to do an hour chit chat, how we feel about it, and that's it. And that's it. And then I see y'all on next Sunday as well at Mr. Social Corner. We talk about Lisa Ray, DJ Academics, and some other people. Cool, cool. Well, tonight, y'all already know we're coming back tonight, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern for Real Queens Real Talk with a gentleman's perspective. We're just gonna talk about a couple things that went on in on social media. This week, um, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. I will have my review up for Catfish. Um, next week, like I said, I will you will not get a P Valley review from me because I will be in Miami, okay, for my birthday. Okay, the cash app is down below. You feel like hitting that up. But when I get back, depending on how much I gotta get caught up on, I may do the review. It just may be a little bit late. I don't know. We will see. But again, just don't be expecting it because your girl will be in Miami drinking on a beach somewhere, okay? Uh, All right. And because it's Father's Day, I don't have no live today at 4, y'all. So, y'all enjoy Juneteenth, Father's Day, 2 and 1. Enjoy yourself and everything. That's why tomorrow y'all have my live of Real Housewives and the Pink P-Valley. So, y'all enjoy yourself. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. It's Sunday morning. Y'all could have been up in the church or cooking for your mans and your daddies and your boyfriends and all that stuff. But y'all are here kicking with us. And I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Mizzle, you coming on the panel tonight? Yeah. If I'm around, I'll come on. If not, right, I'll be cool. mm-hmm. We're just going to have a couple of one, two real quick. And then we're going to get on up out of here for the daddy so y'all can celebrate. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And um, there are my socials. If you need to get in contact with me, you can always email me as well. Anything that you guys want to talk about, let me know. Okay? You got anything else, Mizzle? No, that's it. I All see right. you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all this evening, okay? Take care. Oh, yes, my hearts. Bye, everybody.